It's Dr. Dev Ganyer, cataract coach, with a very interesting case here. It's a young patient in his mid-40s who had prior LASIK, and then he had prior cataract surgery just very recently, a few months ago. He has a history of HLA B27, ankylosing spondylitis, other autoimmune pathologies, including prior uveitis. He developed a cataract at a very young age, only in his mid-40s. The cataract surgery was successful in that a lens was put in the eye in the capsular bag, but the patient had this irregular pupil in the post-op period. We're starting off just by making two paracentesis incisions. We're going to do this whole case with only these small one millimeter incisions. We're not going to make a big incision. We're using these small 25 gauge instrumentation, 25 and 23 gauge. They fit through the paracentesis. Here's some micro graspers. We're going to use it to grab the iris and pull it centrally. Now, this patient could have some sneak yay, the iris stuck in the angle of the eye. The original surgeon reports that there was no loss of iris tissue, which is important. But the prior history of iritis suggests that this iris is not normal. It's been previously sneak yayed down and stuck in position. The iris tone, the muscular tone may be very weak. We're putting in more anesthetic here, above the iris, underneath the iris. This is preserver-free lidocaine. It's going inside the eye. We start off with a higher concentration of like the 2% lidocaine, then we cut it 50-50 with balanced salt solution to end up with about a 1% solution. And we want to give the patient some good anesthesia here. There is no retrobulbar block. The patient's getting simply topical anesthesia as well as this intracameral lidocaine. Intravenously, he's getting some Versed as well as some opioid uh, pain relievers. So already it looks a little bit better by putting that anesthetic and pulling that iris out of the angle. The pupil looks a little bit better already. And there's a little bit of eye movement there because of course the patient is under only a very uh, topical or local anesthetic. Important to go now under the iris. Let's make sure, given the prior history of iritis, let's make sure that the pupil or the iris is not adherent to the capsule bag. So I go 360 both one way and then the other way to really try to get a good separation here. This is important. At this point, we're going to put now some anis uh, viscoelastic, some cohesive viscoelastic, just to maintain the anterior chamber. Again, another sweep under the iris, just to make sure. Again, with the micro graspers, grabbing the iris now a little more firmly and pulling it centrally. Be very careful. The iris is very wimpy, very weak. If you pull very hard here, you'll absolutely disinsert the iris from its root and cause severe bleeding inside the eye and lots of problems. So you want to pull with very little force here. This is very, very gentle. I can't emphasize that enough. So then technician squirts the eye again. Now we we'll go through the other paracentesis. You also note that I use left hand and right hand. You have to be able to use both hands in performing intraocular surgery. So again, pulling the iris there nice and gently. This is achy for the patient. The patient feels some of this. So we put in, you know, extra anesthetic inside the eye. The patient also got some fentanyl intravenously in order to provide some anesthesia. But uh, we have to do this because I want to make sure that the iris is not stuck in the angle of the eye. I want to make sure that iris tissue is not curled up underneath itself. Let's see what we're working with. Now the good news here looks like there's maybe only a little bit of damaged iris there nasally. With enough pulling, we can get a reasonable sized pupil. That looks pretty good. Just by pulling the iris, that looks pretty good. Way better than when we started with. But we can do more. So the pupil is looking pretty good right now. Now we're putting in some myocol to bring the pupil down. Let's see how small we can get the pupil. And does it come down reasonably symmetrically? So place some myocol here. Notice I'm placing it in the iris tissue. 
I really want it to have its effect right there in the iris tissue. So a little bit more, going from both sides. This is the advantage of using both right hand and left hand. Also the advantage of having those two Paris and TC's incisions that are on opposite sides. So pupil's looking pretty good, but it's not beautifully centered. So this tells me, you know what, we're going to need to put a suture in. That nasal, which is the top of your screen, that nasal iris is the weakest. And that's the iris that's going to need at least one suture. It would be nice to put in just one single nasal suture that bring the pupil very close centrally. Here I'm looking with just the red reflex to see the pupil size. So we definitely want to put in one suture. So this patient is getting one suture nasally. Again, that's the top of your screen here. If you look at the center of the cornea, you see the light reflexes. Those are the Purkinje images. The one more on your left is the direct Purkinje image off the surface of the cornea. The other ones are the secondary or tertiary or quaternary uh, Purkinje images. Fast forward here a little bit. We're going to get the 10-0. Polypropylene. This is tenoproline. It's the blue suture material. It's on a long CIF4 needle. Important to go inside that paracentesis to start placing it. Hold this long needle. And here's where I use the second hand. The left hand's going to go in that paracentesis. And this is not a fast procedure here. We're taking our time. There's no rush at all. We're more concerned with the outcome. I'm not concerned with waste, uh, to wasting time or saving five minutes. That doesn't matter. So I place the needle where I want it, right about there. And there's a little bit of art in doing this. Hold that with the forceps. Pass the needle through the iris. There it is. Now this iris tissue is weak. It's atrophic. It's fragile. It's delicate. Be very, very gentle passing this through here. And I pull it through. Push the needle through, pull it through the limbus. And that looks pretty good. Now we'll cut the metal needle off and just have the suture material. Even in HD, that blue 10 proline suture is very difficult to see. It's very thin, much thinner than you see the patient's eyelashes. The eyelashes are draped under the plastic drape, so they're protected from the globe. But that tenoproline is really quite thin. So now we've cut that needle off. We get rid of it. We're going to bring the ends out. So use this seeps or not technique. Named after Dr. Seepser from the East Coast, who had a very brilliant idea in this. We're going to grab that suture material and bring it out and make a loop outside that same paracentesis where I passed this. That looks pretty good. We're going to re-grab it again. Take your time here again. We have no rush. And grab it again. You want to be as delicate as possible. That's great. Now I have a loop outside the eye. And we're going to tie this loop up. So here's the loop. We're going to place the forceps. Tie it down. And then once that knot is tied... We pull these two ends, and the knot will go inside the eye and pull that together. That looks pretty good. Now I'm happy. Do you see how the pupil now is in the center? Now the tough part is, and you'll notice this pretty soon, is it looks beautiful there, but there's already a little cheese wiring. There's a small secondary hole there, just about at the 1 o'clock position above the pupil. Small. But we may have to put a second stitch in to close that. Now, why would you get that hole there? That's because the iris tissue is very weak, fragile, atrophic. Passing a suture through it is very, very, even when we do it very cautiously, it's a very delicate procedure. And you can get this cheese wiring where the tissue just starts to fall apart a little bit. So now we pull that knot through. We're going to finish tying it. Yeah, there we see that secondary small hole there. But I love the pupil position right now. It's absolutely in the center. It looks great. Cutting the ends of the first suture. Cut those suture ends. I cut them a little on the longer side. It's not going to cause any harm having them long. Short ones, as you know, could unravel. This patient's young. He's got 50 years to live in life. I don't want these to ever unravel. 
So it looks perfect, but boy, there is that hole there. I try to push the iris over it. Let's see, will it just stay? Will it be okay? I don't think it's going to be okay. That extra little hole there could provide a secondary image or ghosting in the patient's vision, and we just don't want that. So we're going to have to place another suture here. Another of the same, tenoproline. We'll do it through a different incision, and that'll help. But look at the beautiful centration of that pupil. This I like. Here's that second suture again, grabbing both ends of the material of the iris to close it. Good solid bites. You notice this time I passed very solid bites because I don't want it to cheese wire again. Pull that needle through. We're going to cut it off and then tie it up. And we'll end up with a beautiful cosmetic result for this patient. So there it is, the end of the case. Irrigation aspiration to remove the viscoelastic, clean things up here. And I really like that pupil position. So now we have a nice round pupil in the center of the patient's visual axis and in in close to the center of the cornea. This looks great. Now seal up our incisions here. We also perform some astigmatism treatment for this patient to help with his pre-existing astigmatism. And I'm happy with this result. Give it time to heal up and he'll do great.